Okay, can you hear me? Okay, let's start this uh, the second the second session now. And Sean McCord is the first of two Shawns in this session, first of all, which is helpful for me because I'm terrible with names. So, <laughs> or really, Sean needs no introduction. He's, uh, he works a lot with Asterisk. He work he was here last year as well, presenting interesting stuff about how to to effectively use VoIP with Kubernetes and all the issues with with NATS and so on. And today he's going to talk about something that I'm really interested about. So. Uh, audio pipes and how you can actually handle real-time audio with Asterisk can handle it to external components to do machine learning stuff and interesting things. So without further ado, please go ahead. Thank you. All right, good morning. Uh, so as uh, Lorenzo said, I am Sean McCord. I'm from the US. Uh, I run a small consulting company called Psycore Systems uh, where we do uh, custom application design uh, systems architecture in a number of fields, including voice. So we have a problem. Perhaps problem is a little strong to say, but we have an issue currently with Asterisk where Asterisk makes a great media server. Uh, but trying to interface Asterisk with external sources that are not voice-oriented, that are not VoIP-oriented, that don't know SIP, that don't know RTP, uh, is a bit of a problem. It's a difficulty because there are not very many tools by which we can get that done. So fundamentally, with all the machine learning, with all of the new applications, we need a way to get real-time audio between Asterisk and these external applications. So any number of, op uh, of applications, uh, we have speech recognition, we have speech synthesis, all of the machine learning uh, tools on the cloud platforms and now on Raspberry Pis and the like. Uh, we have dynamic generation of audio. We have various DSP processing. We have real-time fraud detection that we can do by audio analysis and injection of live feedback and uh, all of these really exciting uh, applications. And again, we are kind of hamstrung with how do we get audio out and shove audio in in a real-time basis. So that's not to say we don't have existing solutions. We do. For instance, Chan Alsa, or if you have a really ancient system, Chan OSS, these are basically means of getting audio directly to and from uh, asterisk and a sound card. So that's great for getting one call on one node and getting an analog signal that you can then maybe pipe into some other source, but it's not really a scalable solution and it's not really very useful for inter interacting with other applications. So we have AppJack. So this is a local sound server which switches audio from one input to an output. Uh, so it's not hardware bound, so we don't have to worry about a single uh, audio card, but it is node bound. It's not network oriented. It's not really scalable. Uh, the connections that you make with Jack are semi-static. It requires a lot of uh, latency and effort to change those plugs from one to the other. Uh, it's also a dial plan application, which means you can't use it with things like ARI. And there are lots of really buggy implementations of it. So Chan NBS looks on the surface exactly like what we want. It's a relatively simple protocol. It's a channel interface, which means we can use it with any of the APIs in Asterisk. It's network oriented. Unfortunately, the module itself is deprecated. It's undocumented. Good luck in finding any documentation online. Google completely failed me in this. And there appear to be no implementation server side or client side other than those uh, in the asterisk module itself. So the one most people use is MRCP. Uh, it is uh, an open source server, uh, an open protocol. Uh, there are some commercial products that interface with it. LumenVox comes to mind quickly. Uh, but the protocol itself is very complex. Uh, it's an XML-based uh, system. 
it's a nightmare to try and implement on your own. And unfortunately, the UniRMRCP server, while the server itself is open source and the plugins are nominally doc documented, building plugins for it is equally difficult uh, and requires uh, um, more documentation than they really give. Um, there are closed source proprietary plugins for it that allow you to plug into things like AWS and GCP's machine learning. But even after you get that, you find that it's an extremely expensive option. Despite the server being open source, the plugins are uh, pay to play and a pay per port. And it very quickly, at scale, gets very expensive. So then we have. Chan RTP. Now this is a really simple uh, channel driver that just simply encapsulates the audio that probably already came into Asterisk in a bare RTP uh, channel. It has some uh, additional signaling that is kind of assumed and derived from existing channels. Uh, the protocol itself is copiously documented. It's natural for VoIP endpoints because it is the fundamental uh, real-time audio protocol that's used in VoIP. However, if you're trying to interface with applications that are outside of the VoIP world, it's not a very, uh, not a very easy protocol to implement. It has no non-VoIP uh, implementations to speak of, and it is uh, generally tied to SIP, even in asterisk it's referenced from, um, from, re uh, from referred SIP uh, originators. So it will work, but it's quite a bit of, uh, of effort to make it work for external programs that are not uh, voice oriented. So what we have now, and the purpose of this talk is to uh, demonstrate the audio socket. So audio socket I uh, briefly demonstrated last year here uh, as part of the talk, the application interface. And uh, application interfaces, as we mentioned before, have the limitation of they're only really good for dial plan applications, which means ARI is pretty much useless. So the big addition this, time, uh, this year is adding a channel interface for audio socket. But first, what is AudioSocket? So it's a network-first protocol. Uh, it requires no telephony knowledge to use, and the protocol itself is dead simple. It's a three-byte header and a, a stream of audio data, uh, signed linear data. Uh, it is a greenfield project, so it's completely opinionated. There are no options. You just simply start it, send the uh, unique identifier, tell it you're going to send signed linear and then start streaming. There are very few control codes that all fit within it, all fit within the single byte uh, type indicator, and this can be easily implemented in any language. Uh, we do uh, offer both an application interface and a channel interface, but also a server library interface, at least for the Go side, and other people have built uh, server libraries in Java and in C++. So it is also fully open source. There are no proprietary aspects to this. The Go side, the server side is in Apache 2 license, and the asterisk side is uh, GPL. In order to use it, the channel driver just it looks like any other. Uh, you have the uh, channel type, audio socket. You tell it the server that you should be connecting to uh, by host name and uh, port number, or IP address and port number. Uh, and then you give it a unique ID. So this is the one requirement of audio socket is that every call gets a UUID. Uh, this is just simply so, so that you can track it between external applications and internal applications. It's a nice universal uh, standard, standardized identifier. Uh, it is not required that you pre-register it. These can be randomly generated if you don't need them on the, on the application side. 
but uh, it is required to operate the system. Uh, likewise, as with the previous version, there is also still the application interface by which you can just call audio socket from the dial plan and pipe that to whatever server is running your audio socket. So these are the repos that uh, you can find AudioSocket as well as the demo application that I will be attempting to do here. It's been crashing quite a bit, so I might be able to get uh, something, but we'll see. Unfortunately, this isn't dangerous demo, so I don't get the prize for abs abstract failures. Yeah. Try it without the audio here. So I think we've just got audio problems. It seems to be working on the phone. Is this turned on? Yeah. The Should go. Try it once more. If not, I win the crash and burn. Hello. How may I help you? Scale asterisk up 12 instances. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Scale asterisk to 12 instances. Sorry, I can only scale to 10 asterisk instances. Okay, scale asterisk to 10 instances. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. All right. <laughs> the audio socket did work, yes. Um, so that was streaming audio uh, back and forth uh, between, of course, uh, Google's speech, en speech engine, both the, both the recognition and the synthesis were done via audio socket to the speech engine. All right. Um, so got a quick question. Uh, is there any benefit to audio socket the dial plan application versus dial audio socket using the channel. And really it's just the difference between running a dial plan application and running a channel. So if you are not trying to do anything uh, that requires a separate channel, the application interface is vastly easier. There's no additional bridging involved. There's no uh, additional work that you have to do from ARI. You just call the dial plan application, uh, send it your, uh, give it in the parameters, the server you want to use, and you're done. Asterisk will automatically bridge it internally and have everything just fine. Now this works with uh, dialing the channel also, but again, it's only one side of the uh, circuit. So it's up to you to figure out the other side. The advantage of running inside uh, the dial plan applications is it's just simpler. So other than that, um, any questions? Uh, uh, since this is over uh, TCP, uh, do you have any mechanisms to av av avoid latency buildup that are tri reliable transport causes? So latency build up by what? You get packet loss, so it's retransmitting, so it's falling farther and farther oh, yeah, behind. Yeah. Uh, no, again, this is, this is intended to just simply be able to transmit audio between two points. There is intended to be as simple as possible. So yeah, if, if you've got uh, 
uh, latency building up because you have retransmits and it's failing. Um, that is, as far as the protocol is concerned, your problem. So there is no, uh, there's no attempt to try and cut that down or, or chop off uh, pieces and that kind of stuff. No. I have a quick question as well. So you mentioned that you are using signed linear right now as the audio that you channel over the socket. Is it just narrow band or are you also targeting different sampling rates there? Yeah, so it is. Uh, so first of all, the, the protocol was designed in a way to handle any number of codecs. Uh, right now, the only one I implement on the asterisk side is 8 kilohertz, 16 bit signed linear. Um, that could be anything else in particular, but, uh, but that's all I've designed for the protocol itself. There's no reason it couldn't be a wideband protocol. There's no, uh, there's no particular limitation on that, uh, other than the entirety of the um, size description has to fit in two bytes, the packet length, payload length description. Any other question for Sean? Okay, do you have other slides or is it, uh, do you have other slides or were you done? Uh, nope, nope, this is it. Okay, then a big round of applause for Sean, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right.